So on adhesives, I'm in the stage six industrial technology syllabus. I'm looking specifically into industry related manufacturing technologies in the prelim syllabus. I'm under fittings and other allied materials. And I'm also then drilling all the way down into a single dot point on adhesives. Now, it's very unusual that I'll have a whole video dedicated to a single dot point. Now, you'll notice that all of those dot points above it were all done in the previous video for fittings and allied materials. But it's important to understand that when it comes to adhesives, there is a whole heap of information that you need to consider. The idea is that you need to get that understanding that PVA glue, that white wood glue we have in the workshop, is not necessarily the best option for you to use in your project. It really depends on your project and the properties that you require from your adhesive. Each adhesive has different properties and that's what you really need to take into account when considering which glue or adhesive you're going to be using. Now, I should also mention here, I sometimes will make the mistake of calling an adhesive a glue. I'm gonna try my best to correct myself throughout this video, but please understand that not all adhesives are glues. The syllabus really specifically has picked the word adhesive because they are things that stick and dry, but they are not necessarily used for gluing joints together. They can be used for other applications such as gap filling, such as casting. So the adhesive term that we use is the correct term to use whenever you hear me say glue. I apologize in advance for that. I try my best to avoid that. When I'm thinking about the adhesives that I'm going to be using, I need to think about a few things. There's a couple of the things that I think about up on the uh, screen there. You can have a look at them. But the main things that I think about, the cost, is the amount of money I'm about to pay appropriate for the adhesive that I plan to use and what I need it to do. If I just need it to do a really basic gluing up of a joint that's used in indoor furniture, never going to be outside, never going to be exposed to water, never going to be exposed to food, then why would I waste money purchasing a more ad expensive adhesive that may have additional qualities that make it suitable in wet applications or suitable outdoors or those sorts of things? So there's something, something to consider there. I also need to think about the time. And there are three different types of time to think about. Um, all of them are all about time. Okay, They all cover the processes from the minute you put that first bit of the adhesive on the timber to the time when you take it out of the clamps and then also through to the time that you're able to sit on your finished product or stand on your finished product without it breaking. So time itself is one thing, but we break it down into three sections to help you understand the properties and how they impact so much. Open time is the amount of time that the glue is open before the bonding starts to happen. So how long do you have between putting the glue, or sorry, the adhesive on the timber and then putting the joint together before it's going to start chemically reacting and starting to bind, okay? That's the open time. The clamping time is how long does it need to be in a clamp at a minimum before you can take it out and start doing things with it? And the full cure time is, even though you've taken it out of the clamps after maybe 10 minutes, that doesn't necessarily mean the glue is at its maximum strength. So when does the glue get to its maximum strength or what we call its full cured stage? So they're the times that we think about. If I lived in a uh, area where my adhesives may be uh, subject to super high temperatures or super low temperatures, I'm talking freezing or almost boiling temperatures, then I would really need to take into consideration shelf life. I know for a fact that PVA glue uh, very commonly will split and become completely unusable if it's allowed to freeze, it's very well known. And so for that application, I'd be thinking, if I live in an area that regularly gets snow during winter, then I probably wouldn't be buying bulk amounts of glue because the shelf life um, and the impact of temperature around it would make that irrelevant. Uh, where I work, uh, I'm more based in the uh, Sydney area. So I don't get into those freezing temperatures. I also don't get to super hot temperatures. I mean, it certainly gets hot, but these adhesives are stored in a fairly cool, fairly dry location. So I'm not too concerned about the impacts of extreme temperatures, but it's something you should consider. I also think about gap filling properties. When 
Um, when I purchase my timber, it may have old nail holes if it's recycled, it may have uh, gum veins, it may have wormholes, it may have knots, it may just have a crack or a, or a hole or a chip that needs filling. So can this adhesive be used to fill? Um, and if it can, what's the best kind? Will it come up the right color and all of those sorts of things? There's a whole heap of things that we consider when we're talking adhesives. Let's get into it. Let's look at our first adhesive. Our first adhesive that I'm going to talk to you about is polyvinyl acetate, PVA. This is the most basic of the glues we use in the workshop and is commonly referred to as wood glue. There are PVA glues that are used for craft, okay? But when we're talking wood glue, when it's specifically designed for wood, um, we have this benefit of the glue drying clear. So it's not gonna dry an off yellow color um, like some of the craft PVA glues might. It's particularly useful for furniture making and indoor woodworking. Really important here, indoor. And that's because this type of glue, if exposed to water, okay, if I were to uh, sit it in a bath of water, for example, it will deteriorate. If I were to leave it outside and get rained on, it would deteriorate. Um, if I was to spill liquid all over and not clean it up for a couple of days, it would deteriorate. So you need to be aware that this particular type of glue for indoor woodworking, okay, where it's unlikely to be exposed to huge amounts of water. So I wouldn't use it on a chopping board because chopping boards are regularly exposed to water when they're cleaned. So PVA wouldn't be appropriate in this application. Very likely that your chopping board would start to fall apart over time. It's got a small degree of flexibility. This is a good property. I know flexibility sounds, why would I be happy about that? But it just means as your timber expands and contracts over time, as you know the seasons change and the humidity changes and your timber continues to uh, adjust appropriately, you want a small amount of flexibility. Stops it from becoming brittle and breaking apart. With this glue, because it is water-based, um, water-soluble, sorry, you can get a wet rag, a little bit of water, clean it up while it's wet. No stresses at all. Once it dries, you sh usually can peel it away. If it's a little bit harder, um, you might need to get a chisel and scrape it away, but um, pretty easy to clean up. In terms of the timing, You've usually got about 10 minutes of open time. So maybe 10 to 15 minutes of time before that chemical bond starts to happen. So you could put your glue on your timber and you don't need to have it in your clamps for about 10 minutes. Okay, so you've got 10 minutes to work on getting the glue on all surfaces and putting it together. But it really needs to be in the clamps in that, in that 10 minute period. You then have the initial dry time, approximately 30 minutes with a PVA glue, which means it needs to stay in your clamps for a minimum of 30 minutes, minimum. After 30 minutes, it usually will be dry enough. It really depends on you know the temperature and humidity where you are, but they'll usually be dry enough that you should be able to take it off out of its cramps and start working on your project again. You might be doing some more measuring, some more marking, maybe some basic cutting to length, things like that. I certainly wouldn't be doing anything that puts the joint that you've just glued uh, under a huge amount of pressure so I wouldn't be doing any routing, I wouldn't be doing any thicknessing, and I certainly wouldn't be standing on or uh, stretching or bashing or banging uh, any components in my project there until it's got to its full cure point, which is about one day. This particular glue okay, doesn't have particularly da dangerous or harmful fumes. It's usually, if you get it on your skin, no problems at all, just go wash it off while it's wet. Um, if you've played with some glues while you're in primary school, you may recall peeling PVA glue off. So it's usually not too much of an issue. That being said, whenever I talk about adhesives, I say to everyone, and I will continue to say to you, always check the safety data sheet. It, for this glue, for all of the future glues I'm going to speak about, in terms of safety, don't go off my word, check the safety data sheet. Go to the manufacturer of the glue and find out what they expect you to do to keep yourself safe when using that adhesive. I'm only talking general terms here. In terms of the cost, relatively cheap, couple of dollars for a source bottle size. Second glue I'm gonna to talk to you about is Type Bond 3. This is a type of PVA. It's been engineered, chemically engineered, to improve its qualities. It is still a PVA glue, but it's had some adjustments. The benefit of this glue is that furniture making still applies, indoor woodworking still applies, outdoor woodworking is an, ad sorry, outdoor woodworking is an added benefit of Type Bond 3. That's because this particular adhesive is waterproof. What that means for you what that means for me is that you can still clean it with a wet rag while it is wet. But once it is full cured, so after that 24 hour window when it's full cured, 
the adhesive itself actually has a slightly different chemical structure, which means that water can no longer penetrate it. And you can leave this outside in the rain. You could use it in a chopping board where it's exposed to water quite a lot. And the glue, the adhesive will not deteriorate. This particular adhesive as well has been considered food safe. Uh, so the, uh, the government authorities that look after what sorts of chemicals can come in contact with food have said this particular chemical is safe for you to use in food preparation applications, particularly in indirect contact, e.g. like a chopping board, where it's there, but it's cured and there's usually a sealant over it anyway. What it's not food safe for, just like any chemical, is you can't just go and eat it. So even though it is food safe, when it's cured, it's not going to leach chemicals into your food. It's important to know that that doesn't mean you can just go around drinking or eating type 1. Please don't do that. You will get quite sick. Okay. Read the safety data sheet for those specific details. Again, slightly flexible. This time it dries a light brown color. That's because this is specifically for woodworking. And so they've picked a light brown color so it matches most timber species uh, when it's being used. In terms of the dry times here, like I said, it's 24 hours for that full cure. This time it only needs to stay in its clamps for around about 10 minutes um, before it's at that point where you can pull it out and start working with it. But that also comes at a cost. It means you have approximately two to three minutes of open time where you can need to put the glue on, get the joint together before that chemical reaction starts working. If you miss that window, the chemical reaction may happen before the joint's put together and therefore your joint will no longer uh, stick together. Third glue, this is animal glue, or what we like to call hide glue. This is no longer a PVA. This is a different type of glue entirely. It's a hide glue. It's a natural product coming from animals, okay? Usually coming from animal hides. This comes as a solid crystal. These solid crystals themselves, when you hold them in your hand before they become the adhesive, okay, they are not sticky. They are just solid little gems. In order to make this work as an adhesive, they need to be heated. When you heat them, they liquefy, and it is when they are liquefied that you use them as, as an adhesive. And then when they cool down, so they've no longer got heat applied to them, when they cool down, they begin to cure again. Now, if you've ever cooked before, you would know that heating things up, they get very hot, so you've got to be careful when you're working with hot glues, hot adhesives. You would also know that they cool down quite quickly. And so when this glue cools down, it immediately starts to dry. What that means in terms of open time, probably have like 30 seconds to a minute from going from that heated adhesive to its application. So you might be working and doing your glue up in an environment where you are right next to a stove top with a saucepan full of this animal glue. And you dip your paintbrush into the glue, paint it across the surface, immediately glue it down. You don't actually take it off the heat source at any point so that you can continue working. Now, dries clear, got a small amount of flexibility, but the benefit here is you can continue to soften it by continuing to apply heat. So if you've got a project that you've used animal glue on and then you get to a point where you're like, oh, I need to undo that joint. I need to take that veneer off. You can get a hairdryer, blow it at the surface, heat that glue up, the glue will soften. You can release the joint, release the veneer from the surface, work with it, and then glue it back down again. It's for this reason that musical instruments very commonly use this, particularly when they've got all sorts of bent shapes um, and all sorts of veneer applications and, and those sorts of things. But it's also really used in traditional woodworking repairs. That's because it is a very, very traditional style of adhesive. In fact, before PVA, this is what people would have been using. So if you've got an old piece of antique furniture and you were tasked with restoring it, you need to maybe pull it apart so you could machine it again and, or replace a, uh, replace a rotten piece of timber or something like that. You could bet your dollar that uh, a little bit of heat applied to the joint would soften the glue. You might be able to pull it apart, replace the one piece without pulling the whole project apart or destroying it or cutting it out. So give it a go. Can be costly because it's a very specialized product. And in terms of cleanup, because it is uh, liquid when it's hot, you need hot water to clean it up, so hot rags. So you've got to be really careful there, making sure you're wearing those heat-proof gloves. Once it's cured, 
chisel, um, scrape off any, any solid pieces. While it's liquefied, you might also consider using a uh, plastic spatula. Okay, can be really handy in terms of scraping away excess liquid so that you're not having to uh, use a cloth. Okay. Now we're onto epoxies. When we talk epoxies, you may be thinking river resin tables. And it's good because that is epoxy, but it is not the only kind of epoxy. Super glue, that is also epoxy. Epoxies are a group of chemicals that rely on a chemical reaction to happen. Two different parts are usually joined together. When those two different chemicals are joined together, there's a chemical reaction that sets off the bonding process. Now, in terms of superglue, not always in two parts, but it requires reaction with the moisture in the air for it to set. So that's why superglue in the tube is liquid. As soon as you get it out of the tube, it starts to dry, starts reacting with the air. So learn something new every day. Epoxies, because of their properties, because of the fact that they dry extremely hard, they are not flexible. In fact, they're the very opposite of flexible. They're very brittle. They dry extremely hard. They cannot be softened afterwards. Okay. Well, um, not in any way that um, an animal glue would. For that reason, they're great for laminate bending. You can put epoxy on your laminates, do your bending, clamp it into position, and then when you're done, you let, let the clamp go. And it shouldn't spring back. It shouldn't spring back much at all because the epoxy there should hold it quite rigid in its position. Epoxies are also used for resin casting. Now, when we're talking resin casting, so those river resin tables, maybe you've seen a lamp made from epoxy as well with combination of timber and epoxy. Slightly different version of epoxy is needed than if you're just using a adhesive style of epoxy for like gluing laminate together. Okay, so in resin casting, it needs to dry or cure much slower. And you really need to be taking into account the number of bubbles because bubbles can ruin a project, particularly those river resin tables. And so you really need to make sure that you've got a nice stable chemical reaction and you're doing the mix of the two part ratio absolutely perfectly and measuring it out before each mix because the smallest adjustment in those chemicals will actually impact the uh, viability of the adhesive. When we're talking resin casting as well, we can talk shallow casting. So a, uh, a fairly thin, thin cast that might be, you know, one to three centimeters in thickness. Once you start getting over that thickness, you start getting into deep casting territory. And it's a different type of epoxy resin that you need again with an even slower drying time. Like I said earlier, you can also use epoxies as a wood filler. Very common. I use this quite extensively particularly if I've got a knot on a really nice piece of timber, but I like the character of the knot, but I don't like the fact that it's um, going to have holes in it and, and attract dust and things like that. I might get my epoxy, mix it with a little uh, black tint, try and tint it darker, make it match the color of the knot and completely fill the knot off with that epoxy. So that I have a nice smooth surface on my table. I still get the character of the knot, but I don't get the uh, negative qualities of the knot possibly falling out and the little holes that collect dust and things like that. So think about it, this, this type of adhesive dries clear, dries um, opaque. It really depends on the quality you purchase. You can now purchase, and I say purchase, but it's very expensive, glass quality, crystal clear quality that looks like glass. So that's one option that exists, but the clearer the quality, the more expensive the product becomes. Okay, so something to keep in mind. This particular one, again, you don't want to get it on your hands. So when we're scraping away excess liquid, we use a plastic scraper. Epoxies don't stick to a plastic, so that's something really handy to know when we're cleaning up. We can put it in a plastic bucket, we can uh, use a plastic scraper and it won't, uh, won't damage those products. And um, small amounts of excess can be cleaned up with rubbing alcohol, so like isopropyl alcohol or acetone, like your uh, nail polish remover, can be used to clean up or polish small surfaces of it. Now, drying time, you're really looking minutes of open time, 10 minutes of dry time, so 10 minutes in clamps, and you should then have a bit of a seal, but it might still be tacky, but it at least will be holding together. 
if we're talking resin casting or any sorts of pores at this point, you're no longer looking at 10 minutes, you're looking at several hours and leading up to days, possibly weeks before you get fully cured. And that, again, will depend on how thick the pore is. The thicker the amount of epoxy you're working with, the longer it will take to cure because all of that epoxy needs to make that reaction with the moisture in the air um, and have that, have that cure occur. You also need to be really careful when working with epoxy that you have a stable temperature because the gluing, uh, sorry, the curing time will be impacted by high and low temperature ranges. So you really need to make sure we, we typically work on controlled climate conditions when we're working in big amounts of epoxy. And there's lots of safety considerations here. Again, refer specifically to the safety data sheets, but as some general advice, you'd be looking at gloves, eye protection, respirators, and fully protective clothing. Long sleeves, long trousers. You don't want to get any of this stuff on your skin because there's a chemical reaction happening. You may experience chemical burns if you get exposure to your skin. So definitely read the safety data sheet for the details, but there's some generic advice. In terms of cost, this stuff is expensive. Now, super glue might be $2 a tube, but it's $2 for a very small tube. If you think about the amount of super glue you get compared to the amount of PVA you can get for $2, this is a very expensive type of adhesive. Okay, So use it when needed, but don't use it just for the sake of saying that you have used epoxy. The final type of glue I'm going to talk to you about today is hot melt glues. Uh, you may be familiar with this type of glue, but may not know it as hot melt glue. You may have heard it referred to as glue guns. This is because to apply this, you have a heating gun. Okay, so gun sort of shape, got a heating element in it. There is a stick of glue that passes through the back, passes through the heating element, liquefies, and that's how it's used. This is a thermoplastic, which means it can be heated and softened again, kind of like the animal glue in that sense. Once you've put it on a product, you can pull it off again just by applying some heat. So hair dry there, soften it, then you can scrape it away. Now, where would I use this? Probably not many places. Might use it in the creation of a jig. Might use it to temporarily hold some things together while I'm trying to apply some other sort of fasteners or other adhesives. Might use it in model making, in fact. But I wouldn't really ever be using it to hold a joint together because it doesn't have the right structural strength there. Okay? Even when it is fully cured, it is quite flexible. The glue sticks themselves that you buy from the shop they're very, very bendy. And so for that sense, it's not really ideal to be using in any structural application. Dries clear. It's also waterproof when it dries, which is a fantastic property. Um, again, might be useful for you when you're filling, um, when you're trying to seal the back of a knot hole so that you can pour an epoxy over it, stop the epoxy uh, seeping through. Something to consider there. Um, but you don't have much working time with any of these heat-based adhesives. So you really have around about five or 10 seconds of open time before it starts to set. Within two minutes, it's, it's initially dry. And after that, it's basically done. This stuff doesn't really cure. It's a thermoplastic, so it never goes fully hard. Um, so after that two minute mark, once it's dry, and once, it, once it's cool, sorry, it's set and it's in position. Um, so you just apply a little bit of heat, softens again, start working with it. Because of that, you can use a plastic scraper to scrape away any excess here. Heat it up, scrape it away, and you're all sorted. Just peels off plastic scrapers, no problems. This stuff is very cheap. Uh, for $2, you can normally buy yourself a heated glue gun and a couple sticks of glue. And for another $2, you can probably buy 10 sticks of glue. So um, quite a cheap glue. In terms of cost to PVA volume, probably more expensive than PVA still. Um, but you wouldn't be using it as extensively. It's only really used in small temporary applications, like I said. Okay, so there you have it. That's the end of adhesives. There are so many other videos you could be watching about different types of adhesive. The preliminary syllabus doesn't talk about which adhesives you need to know. So there's a bit of a general overview on the ones you probably would wanna know for year 11. Once we get into uh, our HSC content, we start looking at some more specific things like um, urea formaldehyde as an example and the specific applications there. But for preliminary, that's a good enough surface level knowledge to let you know that there are PVAs and other types of glues. And even within PVAs, there are types of PVA, um, depending on the application. So have a think about it when you're planning your projects, which glue is the most appropriate and how can I minimize the cost by making sure I'm only buying the glue that I need, not the glue 
um, that I think I need. Okay, so actually doing the research to make sure you're getting the right sort of stuff. Hope that video has been real helpful for you. Your next video moves on into the planning processes around designing uh, projects and getting them ready for purchasing timber. Uh, so good luck and uh, look forward to seeing your projects.